Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a more relaxed Sunday episode of Ted's Blue Solo with me, your most gracious host, Ted. Now I, uh, considering it's, you know, quite um, a warmish day, it's not boiling hot or anything, but I just stepped outside my front door just to get a bit of fresh air, and then uh, when I came back in I thought I could really do with something quite refreshing. So. I remembered I had bought this particular little number for today's episode of Ted's Booze Cellar and this is uh, Steel Cut Gluten Free Oat Pale Ale by the Burnt Mill Brewery. So yeah, I think I might have had like one or two of the Burnt Mill Brewery's um, products before, but I've never had Steel Cut Gluten Free Oat Pale Ale and I've never had an pale ale that's made out of oats before, or at least a, I don't think I have as far as I'm aware. It just says on the back, gluten free brewed with gluten free, sorry, gluten free pale brewed with gluten free oats, buckwheat and maize, dry hopped with Simcoe, Citra and Callista. Okay, so it's only got three different types of hops, so that's quite interesting. Um, one thing it does say on the back, uh, that it contains for allergy warnings is water oats, buckwheat maize, hops and yeast, and allergens. Oh, the allergens are in bold, so the only allergens in this is oats. Right, okay, that's good to know. Um, so yeah, it seems like it's gluten-free for anyone else out there who might be gluten-free. I'm not gluten-free myself, but I know a few people who are, so you might want to try this out. It's only 4.2% as well, so it's not that strong. It's like should hopefully be quite refreshing and light or at least that's what i'm hoping it is anyway um are they based out of suffolk oh right i thought i recognized them anyway i quite like the design of the can because it reminds me a lot of um the design of the can for harvey's best bitter so it's a nice sort of like british sort of scenery on the can that sort of makes you think of just like relaxing with a plowman's dinner and you know, just watching the sunset as you finish a hard day's work. And yeah, I think the addition of like the chrome design of the can along with this nicely designed illustration here, um, or at least the illustration of this photograph contrasted against the chrome design of the can really is quite pretty. So yeah, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 for the design of the can. Now let's uh, see what the smell is like. Because um, most pale ales tend to smell pretty good, they tend to smell pretty light and refreshing, I think, so hopefully this is much the same. Okay, it smells quite light and refreshing, but there's definitely a hoppy sort of smell there. Um, and it's sort of got a bit of a mangoey, citrusy tint to the smell there, so yeah, it smells quite nice and refreshing. Probably give the smell a 7.5 out of 10. I think um, it could be a bit more milder because it does hit you a bit crazily and um, not necessarily in a bad way but I think the smell could be slightly more milder um, but yeah 7.5 out of 10 for the smell but as always we won't know what this is actually like until we actually taste it so to anyone out here watching this show who's gluten free hats off to you you have my deepest sympathy sympathies for your struggles and hopefully you may find this one one day and enjoy it. So, bottoms up. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, the taste of a, a pale ale was present throughout. Um, I perhaps mistakenly thought it was going to have like an IPA-ish sort of finish to it there, but no, it's um, it's kind of it's kind of strange because it's kind of like got textures and flavours kind of reminiscent of. IPAs, pale ales, juicy pale ales, and also lagers as well, weirdly enough. It's got like a lagery, crisp undertone throughout. The beginning of the taste kind of feels like it's going to be an IPA. And then the finish is much like uh, a juicy pale ale that's got one or two extra hops in it. 
so yeah it's a weird one and it's and then it's got this strange possibly soft drink sort of like mm -hmm. underlying fizz at the end so it's a weird sort of taste but the mixtures and flavors of the way they're put together do honestly work quite well and you do get a bit of that citrusy tint i mentioned about the smell in the taste as well but Thankfully, it's like very well balanced. It's not overpowering or anything as it, as it can be with some pale ales. So that's very pleasant. Um, and yeah, this is quite refreshing. I would really like sort of be quite interested in like having this with like say some pork scratchings or a nice bit of cheese on toast after a hard day's work. Um, that's the kind of thing I imagine this being good as anyway, um, because it doesn't have any serving suggestions on the back. Um, so that's probably how I'd have it. The at the end of a hard day's work with some pork scratchings or like uh, spicy nuts maybe or with a light meal of um, plowman's lunch or salad and soup maybe because it's nice fresh and light yeah it's a good sort of relaxation drink i think that's the best way to put it it's definitely not a sexual pre-drink drink um you could probably use it in some cooking recipes, but yeah, generally speaking, it's a relaxation drink. That's the primary thing to note with this. And you ha only have like a maybe two or three of these just to sort of really like ah, relax, just chill out, and uh, just have a good time. Yeah, I am. Um, I gotta say, like, the image of like a British sort of like windmill over a nice field is kind of like where I'd imagine myself sitting, you know, listening to a podcast and. Um, eating some pork scratchings and reading a book maybe but yeah yeah no it's nice i really like this i think mm, i think 8.5 8.75 out of 10 I think 8.75 out of 10 because I think the only points it's really missing out on is because it could, you know, go down slightly easier. Like some drinks are a bit easier to sort of like sip, some are a bit easier to just glug. This is a bit easier to sip, but I was kind of hoping it would be a bit easier to sort of ch uh, chuck down. So, no, actually no, I'm going to be a bit charitable. I'm going to give it a 9. This is a solid 9. But then again, like, the fact that it misses out on a point, I think, is perhaps just down to my personal tastes. So, some of you guys might, uh, out there might try this and think it's only like a 7 or something, or a 6. Or some of you might try it, realise the same characteristics of it as I do, but the fact that it's only a sipping drink is completely fine to you, and you may end up voting it a 10 out of 10. But to be honest with you, I like some sipping drinks, but I don't know. Um, it's just the way my mind works, and it's just my own personal tastes and sensibilities. I feel like a 9 is appropriate for it for me, but that's just me. You guys try it out for yourselves, see what you think, and if you have any other ideas about it, let me know in the comment section below. And, as always, if you have suggestions for other episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar, or any of the videos uh, for other series that I do on this channel, Leave your suggestions in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. I'll have a read of them. Can't promise anything, but I'll try my best. Um, and yeah, if you guys did like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe. And if you are interested in any of my other online activities, as always, I'll put my social medias and other YouTube channels and the links to all that in the video description below, so check that out. And yeah, until next time, I've been uh, Ted on... Ted's Boo Cellar and stay safe, drink responsibly, know your limits, have fun, wash your damn hands, and I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Boo Cellar. Bye bye for now.